another man of the hour, Justin Bieber, you dainty wigger, you. Uh, Justin Bieber, they say that you roast the ones you love, but I don't like you at all, man. I'm just here because this is a real good opportunity for me. Uh, <laughs> Justin! Oh, you gotta give it up for Justin. He started from the bottom, and he's still a bottom. Uh, I don't like your music, man. I'm not a big fan of it. I listen to some of it. I'm not a fan. I don't like your music. I think it's bad. I think it's bad, man. I don't like it. <laughs> I hate your music, man. I hate your music more than Bill Cosby hates my comedy. Uh, Unlike everyone here tonight, I personally have a great appreciation for Bruce's music. I play it at all my parties when it's late and I want everyone to leave immediately. <laughs> Bruce and I are actually neighbors. We're in the same town in Bedford. He has a wonderful house. The interior design is amazing. He wanted everything inside to look mid-century modern, except his new wife. <laughs> I remember when Bruce invited me to their wedding. He hand-delivered the invitation, and I told him, I'll catch the next one. <laughs> George, Michelle, it's really great to see you. Because of our work together on the bridge of the fabled enterprise, it broke a lot of stereotypes. Uh, not only did we take a chance and allow an Asian gentleman to drive, <laughs> we... We had a black woman sitting in front of a large screen who didn't yell things at it. <laughs> George, for the last time, I will not let you suck my cock. <laughs> and Michelle, thank you very much. You know, the whole time Bob and I were doing Full House, he was also hosting America's Funniest Home Videos. He did that show for so long, he can't get a boner unless a six-year-old boy whacks his balls with a whiffle bat. <laughs> What a tough gig that must have been, huh? His entire job consisted of saying, take a look at this, which is what he used to say to Mary Kate Olsen in her dressing room. Whitney, what's your deal? You look like the chicks I used to bang before I had all this money. <laughs> do it, baby, do you're, it. You're a chick, right? Okay, yeah. On the Jersey Show, we call ugly chicks grenades. But uh, I actually wouldn't call you a grenade because you're not blowing up anytime soon. <laughs> hey, uh... <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jeff Ross, what's up, man? What's up, buddy? Jeff, me and you have a lot in common, buddy. What's that? We're both from Jersey, and tonight's my first night doing comedy. <laughs> <laughs> Well... It's also your last night, just so you know. <laughs> and now we come to the wonderful Joan Rivers. Yes, indeed. Joan has been... Hi, baby. Joan has been in show business for 50 years and still going strong. Joan has had her face on more red carpets than an Irish lesbian, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Joan, and I, I know this is a fact, Joan has fucked more old Jews than Bernie Madoff. <laughs> Most of you know that Joan, she sells beauty products on QVC. I don't have a joke for that, I just think that it's hilarious in a, <laughs> in a tragically ironic way. So look at this dais. Fat guys, old ladies, and an Asian. I feel like I'm on a bus to Atlantic City. Look at this, Nichelle Nichols, Farrah Fawcett, and Betty White. Uh, I'll take women I would masturbate to 30 years ago for a thousand, Alex. <laughs> what, a, uh, what a cruel joke, three women you'd wanna fuck 30 years ago, and one I wouldn't fuck 30 beers from now. We are here roasting Flava Flav. Uh, you had your own show, The Flavor of Love, which I didn't, I didn't know syphilis had a flavor. I had no idea. That was so odd. And by the way, I don't want to say that the, uh, the girls on that show were skanky, but there were times I would watch it and I would say, is this the flavor of love or the island of Dr. Moreau? That is how <laughs> up 
Yes, an H.G. Wells reference at the Flavor Flav Roast, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, yes. Joseph Gordon Levitt, everyone. He's so cute, so adorable. I bet you eat pussy, but only with the crust cut off first. Isn't that his look? Speaking of crusty pussy, I'll get to you in a second, Sybil. I, um... <laughs> I know. I know. Martha Stewart, thank you for being here. <laughs> Seriously, and congratulations on getting that Thai soccer team out of your vagina. <laughs> and into your sweatshops. That's where they are now. Surprisingly, Martha said that prison food wasn't that bad, just, you know, as long as it was clean shaven, so. She loves attention to detail. Is she laughing? I'm terrified of her. Bruce, I see you now, and I see you, and I see your beautiful daughters, and, I, and I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you. I remember when we had nothing, and we would go, we would go to your house and take a bath together, and we, 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 we loved each other. We would wash each other's taints, and I always <laughs> made sure that your taint was taut before you went out. <laughs> Bruce wasn't even the best actor in his house. Demi Moore was. <laughs> you know, I, I, it's funny, I, I see you, and I see you with your daughters, and I see the love, and they're such beautiful girls. And I think about how, you never hear a father brag about his daughter's sexual prowess. You know, they always brag about, my son's a buck, he's a stud. Freshman year in college, he nailed everybody. Boys, girls, dogs, he didn't give a <laughs> You never hear a father brag about his daughter. Hear that up there? Listen to that, that's my daughter, take it on 10 guys. <laughs> yeah, that's my baby, that's our youngest. She always loved cock. <laughs> the bigger, the better. She always had men lined up around the block. Guys tag teaming her from behind, high fiving over her jizz filled back, dropping loads in her ears, she couldn't hear them. What can I tell you, huh? She's just like a mother, that kid. Where's my Knight Rider fans? I know you're out there. Yeah. What a lucky break. What are the odds an alcoholic gets cast in a show about a car that drives itself? <laughs> That's a good one, huh? That's a I heard the Hoff once got so drunk he f***ed Kit in the gas hole. And now for some jokes. A drunken farmer stumbles upstairs into his bedroom, waking his wife, Roseanne. She sits up and sees her husband holding a sheep under his arm. The farmer yells, this is the pig I've been fucking. Roseanne says, you idiot, that's not a pig, it's a sheep. The farmer yells, shut the fuck up, I was talking to the sheep. <laughs> where, where is Jane Franco? Take three. Take three. Okay, I gotta go. You take over. What the fuck is he doing back there? All right, Spidey pose. Genius. Mr. Franco, I'm so sorry, my paper's late. Oh, late, F. Beautiful, yes, yes, and that's our cover. Congratulations, right, doctor. Thank you, thank you. James Franco documentary, scene one, Apple, take one. Hit it. All right, here we go. Justin Bieber.
killed the white boy. The white, watch out, watch out. Let me through, Jesus, no. Not like this. Wait, wait, he's moving, he's moving. Everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, we are here tonight to honor a man whose career has spanned nearly four decades in entertainment, Mr. David Hasselhoff. <laughs> Looking at this turnout, David, I can honestly say that you deserve better. Seth MacFarlane, Jeffrey Ross, Jerry Springer, I haven't seen this many geeks since I gang-banged the cast of Glee. <laughs> but I digress. David Hasselhoff is a legend! <laughs> David Hasselhoff started his career on The Young and the Restless. Now he's known as the old and the shit-faced. <laughs> Man, David, were you ever a drunk? I don't want to say David drank a lot, but his liver was so black and bloated, it could have starred in Precious. <laughs> David Hasselhoff's liver is so black, it's fucking two of the Kardashian sisters. Now, I didn't even know you were gay. I did it, I did it, I liked you. Some men like men, and, well, women are probably the number one reason why I'm not a homosexual today. All right, I blew one guy, but I needed a ride real bad. I'm teasing, I'm kidding, I didn't need the ride. But... Rob Lowe. <sighs> People may be wondering what my connection is to Rob. Well, years ago, I was cast in a show called Lion's Den. I'm sure none of you saw it because it starred Rob Lowe. But anyway, <laughs> the first script said that Rob and I were supposed to kiss, and I asked them if they could rewrite it so I wouldn't have to because I knew where that mouth had been. But they said no, and I had to do it. So years later, Rob wrote in his memoir that I was the only girl in history who did not want to kiss Rob Lowe. He talked about it on his book tour. He bitched about it on Howard Stern. He even made out with Ellen to show her what it was like. Yeah. Well, that part I actually kind of understood because kissing him did make me feel like a lesbian. Um. <laughs> so Rob, I know you've always wondered why I didn't kiss you that day. So tonight I will tell you why. In song. <laughs> so shocked and the lion's den when I did not want to kiss him you see the problem Rob is you're such a whore you completely forgot we hooked up before cause you showed me your penis when I was just 16 ish Cougar. Uh, of course, tonight is actually a benefit for Joan Rivers' favorite charity, Melissa Rivers. Oh, look at her, the lovely Melissa. Look at her, you're like a chip off the old face. Uh, you have your mother's nose. It's in the will. Yeah. 
You're amazing, Joan. 40 years of telling it like it is. You got the biggest balls in the business. And Joan, her whole life, all she wanted to just be considered one of the guys. And good news is your doctor says you're only three surgeries away. <laughs> anyway, I'll start with the Jewiest and work my way down. Sarah Silverman is here. Uh, <laughs> Sarah and I actually worked together on the film uh, Take This Waltz, uh, which she was great in. She actually did full frontal nudity in the movie, uh, which was fantastic. Uh, it was amazing. I always thought she was very liberal, but it turns out she's actually a giant Bush supporter. <laughs> Huge. They say you only roast the ones you love. So this is gonna be short. It's been a rough year for comedy. Not only did the world lose Greg Giraldo, <laughs> but even worse, it kept Jeff Ross. Wow, that's harsh. And now, on to the guest of honor, Ms. Joan Rivers. You know, I heard you spent over 100 grand on your face, and I'm gonna tell you something, that was money well spent. That baby is tight. And you know you the old saying, you don't f the face? Well, in your case, I'll take my chances. <laughs> Plus, that work is gonna save your daughter, Melissa, a fortune in taxidermy costs, so she can... <laughs> she can still cart you around and keep her career going. <laughs> hey, hey, hey! I don't mean to... I don't mean to sound judgmental, I just hate it when someone uses a much more famous relative to further their own career. <laughs> Melissa, that's my gig, bitch. Wow, fucking wow. You know, I personally asked that William Shatner be here only because I needed some clean urine. <laughs> I had to wring it out of the diaper, but it did the job. <laughs> Deus, a word I knew before tonight. Someone must have told the producer that this was a panel of Kenny Rogers roasters, because you guys are a bunch of chickens. <laughs> Thank you. It's a chicken-based restaurant, I researched that. The lovely Sarah Silverman is here. I hate to break it to you, Sarah, but you're getting older. And you know who else is getting older? My mom. I'm scared she's gonna die soon. What's that gonna be like? Roasted you? Roasted Sarah. Okay, who's my next victim? Uh, Natasha Leggero is here. She's, uh, she's basically a complete unknown, but tonight we're getting paid the same amount of money. Uh, got you. Well, guess what, Natasha? You can do everything I can do, but I can never experience the miracle of birthing a child. Roasted you. <laughs> Expect letters, Comedy Central. If you don't want controversy, you shouldn't have invited the king. <laughs> Jeff Ross, what was that thing in a Speedo? You are disgusting. Your dick in a Speedo looks like a hamster stuck in a water balloon. <laughs> Jeff, you are so disgusting. I wouldn't have sex with you if I was Hulk Hogan and you were Brooke Hogan. <laughs> George Hamilton is here, okay, whatever. George, you're so tan, I'd think you're Mexican. The only difference is that Mexicans work. <laughs> Lisa Lampanelli is here, so funny. Lisa, they say women's bodies are like a wonderland. Yours is more like a football field because it's 100 yards and a lot of black dudes have sprained their ankle on it. Lisa, you look like Susan Boyle fucked Snooky. Lisa, your vagina is like a bad movie. It opened wide and all of the Wayans brothers have been in it. <laughs> Speaking of, we know your ball, just take off the bandana already. Hulk Hogan is here. 
You're a disaster. You're always wearing like spandex around your crotch. You have less sperm in your balls than Pam has in her mouth right now. This is my first roast, and I have to say, I'm shocked. Whew, I've heard words here tonight that I have never heard before. Like Lil. <laughs> and Rel. <laughs> Lil Rel, I'm glad you're here because I've been meaning to apologize for calling the police about your barbecue. <laughs> Don't worry, Alec. Nothing said here tonight will be meaner than what you left on your daughter's voicemail. <laughs> Alec, sit back, unclench your fists, and I promise this will be the funniest thing you've ever been a part of that Tina Fey didn't carry you through. But you know, with all those dangerous jobs shows on TV, like the ones about crab fishing, ice road trucking, why is there no show about the most dangerous job out there, being an escort for Charlie Sheen? <laughs> How long must we wait for the first season of Deadliest Snatch? I'm ready to see that right, right now. Colin Quinn's here. His member is tiny. I feel sorry for his wife. She has to put hot sauce on his penis just so she could feel something. <laughs> Don't you laugh at a sex joke, Ron White. You're a mess. You couldn't get it up with the pump and the clapper. <laughs> Ron White has disappointed more fat women than Jenny Craig. <laughs> I feel bad that guys don't want to f me. Tonight, I feel lucky. When Paris Hilton was still in diapers, Pamela Anderson was already getting gangbanged on Betamax. She loves rock stars. The woman has screwed more musicians than Napster. Pam, you do know that blow me is just an expression, right? Charlie, you are a monster. Every moment of your life looks like the first two minutes of Law & Order SVU. Charlie, I don't understand why you're not grateful for what you have right now. I mean, after all, the only reason you got on TV in the first place is because God hates Michael J. Fox. And now it's time to bring up the man of the hour, comedy legend Joan Rivers. Good to see Comedy Central diversifying his talent with whatever race Pete Davidson is. Uh, <laughs> you just look real, you're just real vague, man. A weird, vague ass face, and I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like your face at all, you know. You seem like a nice person, but when I talk to you, I don't have fun. Uh, <laughs> Pete, Pete has got a lot going on. Pete, I don't know how you can juggle SNL, stand up, and Lauren Michaels balls in your mouth all at the same time. An amazing. <laughs> Multitasker Pete Davidson is. Yeah, Good Lord, thank you so much. This is awesome. Good to see my buddy Toby here tonight. He's a good buddy of mine and a good American. His blood's red, his picket fence is white, and his last album, Blue. <laughs> You know what, Toby always writes songs about dive bars with crusty waitresses and jukebox with sticky floors and signs out front that say, appearing tonight, Greg Geraldo. 
But Greg, don't worry. One day, opportunity will knock on your door, and you will answer it, and it will ask for directions to Carlos Mencia's house. <laughs> All right, guys. And now a real treat for fans of hate watching. <laughs> Ann Coulter's coming up. Ann hopes the Republicans uh, can hold on to the house so she can continue to haunt it. <laughs> she seems stiff and conservative, but Ann gets wild in the sheets. Just ask the Klan. I was classically trained in live theater. I improvised, no script, no director, just me and the donkey. Five sold-out shows a night for six years till the donkey died of exhaustion. <laughs> then I was finally ready for Hollywood. <laughs> what have you nothings done? My YouTube video has 400 hits. <laughs> Fuck a donkey, then talk to me. Now get up here, Stamus, let's see what you got. <laughs> Thank you, Tranny Bonaducci. <laughs> Kathy, you look like Ronald McDonald Lucille Ball's corpse then pushed it down a flight of stairs. <laughs> Holy shit. What's with all the surgery, Kathy? Lord, you've been stitched up thousands of times, but you're still sad to look at. You're like the AIDS quilt. <laughs> what a night. A couple of trolls, a fairy, and a giant all going after a sunken-eyed little monster who's obsessed with jewelry. It's like the Lord of the Rings. <laughs> or the last. Look at you, you horse-toothed bastard. <laughs> Corolla, you got a mouthful of two-by-fours. Every, every time you smile, I remember to waterproof my deck. <laughs> Corolla's an Italian word. It means one eyebrow. <laughs> Have some dignity and stick to radio. You look like Pete Sampras with Down syndrome. <laughs> and, and I'm... Uh, <laughs> The Love Lines, only in America. What a crappy show The Love Lines is. Yeah, teenagers calling in to complain about their abortions and their anal warts. It's like listening to the messages on Andy Dick's answering machine. How about a hand for tonight's host, Joseph Boredom Levitt? JGL, Joseph Gordon Levitt. The only three words more boring than gluten-free cracker. <laughs> Thanks for dressing up, Joseph. You look like a lesbian on the way to prom. <laughs> Lisa Lampanelli, you are an inspiration to anyone on the path to sobriety. I'm sure you'll never develop a Coke problem because it's too hard for you to look into a mirror. for one tiny helpful bit of constructive criticism. Each and every one of those black penises thrust into your vagina or your clammy fat rolls is really a dagger stabbing into your father's heart. You know, I have been a huge Trekkie ever since the show first aired, and that's why I'm so thrilled to see Nichelle and George Takei here tonight, because Let's face it, we all know Shatner's nuts, <laughs> but George has actually tasted them. <laughs> oh, 
it always makes me laugh when I see Artie Lang on stage, <laughs> knowing I'm going to outlive him. <laughs> Hallo Jeff, hier ist die Heidi und ich muss sagen, ich möchte unbedingt ähm, lieber in Deutsch sprechen, wenn ich äh, über, über dich spreche hier bei Comedy Central. Und deswegen habe ich mir gedacht, hey, das ich das me, Heidi. Also ich bin in Yo Berlin. Jeff, what's up? Und dann, ähm, Check it out, I'm chilling in Germany right now, but I wanted to give you your props on Comedy Central. Der, ähm, I said hell, Jeff's my dog and that mullet-headed fool is straight up funny. Yo. Jeff, remember the time we was cold lamping at the club? Did she say cold lamping? I think she did. And you was like, yo, want to hear a joke? And I was like, I. You busted out all that redneck flavor? Man, you got us white people down cold. Uh, Sean, you know what? I'm not going to stand up here and run a bunch of hacky gay jokes into the ground, all right? I'm not Will and Grace. Larry Bird is here. I mean, Nikki Glaser is here. That hurt, Mike. That hurt. Uh, you know, the only difference between Larry Bird and Nikki Glaser is Larry could actually pass his 33. <laughs> dating. So, I'm sorry, you were so nice earlier. I, I just, yeah. yeah. Nikki, look at you. You damaged little climber. <laughs> you know, Nikki was the only girl kicked off Jeffrey Epstein's island for networking. I really didn't want to come up here for three reasons. One, unlike the rest of the people up here on this stage, I'm aware that I'm not a comedian. Two, I haven't had much sleep. Um, I had a terrible, terrible nightmare last night that I was at my mother's funeral. The worst part was I was 75. <laughs> and three, to be really, really honest, it has hurt me very much to hear you call my mother obnoxious and foul-mouthed, crude, cheap and loud, and you are all wrong, because she is not loud. <laughs> she was an amazing mother growing up. She taught me everything about life, love, and sex. And I remember so clearly, so clearly when I asked her, what's a blow? And without hesitation, she said to me, 50 bucks, two dinners, and a watch. We all know there's a good chance Charlie will be dead soon. So I wrote an, ob ah. an obituary. Charlie Sheen, who became a tabloid fixture due to his problems with drugs and alcohol, was found dead in his apartment. Actually, you know what? I, I kind of actually just copied Amy Winehouse's obituary. <laughs> it's, it's, I only had to change three things, though. The sex of the deceased, the location of the body, and the part that says, a talent that will be missed. <laughs> Jeff, how am I the one who played 19 seasons and you're the one who looks like you took 20 years of elbows to the face. <laughs> you ugly mother <laughs> Look at Jeff. Jeff got a body like a cafeteria lady. <laughs> My main man, Chris Paul, from the Clippers is down there. Hey, Chris, where you guys playing? You ain't gonna be getting the ring. I got four of them if you need to borrow one. You guys suck. <laughs> Andy Samberg. Hi, how are you? Andy's comedy group is called The Lonely Island, which is how each of his teeth feel. <laughs> Andy, I'm looking forward to the sad acoustic version of Dick in a Box at Lorne Michaels' open casket funeral. <laughs> Bill Hader, you are this generation's Phil Hartman. Hopefully. <laughs> Look, Jeff Ross is, is a legend. His funniness is a legend. But when I say legend, I mean a myth.
like the Loch Ness Monster or Bigfoot, like, we all believe they exist, but who really ever saw it? What do you call a woman who's broken down barriers for female comics? A comedian who's entertained us and our families on TV for years? What do you call an icon, a beloved icon that's part of the fabric of this country? You call her Carol Burnett. <laughs> <laughs> but we love you anyway, Joan. Good night. How you doing, Franco? You look like Johnny Depp with lupus. <laughs> Bill Hader, holy mackerel, so hilarious. That was great. Too bad you can't do an impression of a guy with two equally sized eyes. <laughs> Man, look at that, get a close up. <laughs> I've heard of a lazy eye, but that left one's collecting unemployment. <laughs> Listen, I'm just gonna cut to the chase. Justin Bieber, Justin Bieber. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, this guy is doing it right. Here's a couple things I know. September 1st, 2014, Bieber arrested for a collision with a minivan in his hometown of Stratford, Ontario, Canada, and then beat up the occupant of the minivan. Nice work. <laughs> October 18th, 2010, Bieber accused of assaulting a 12-year-old at a laser tag arena. Kaboom. I only wish the kid was a nine-year-old. <laughs> March 28th, 2013, Bieber flies into Munich with his pet monkey, Mally. Doesn't have the proper paperwork, so he leaves it at a zoo in Germany. It's a monkey. It's named Mally. Don't think twice, you leave it at a German zoo. March 4th, 2013, two hours late to a concert in Dubai because he refused to stop playing a video game. Say what? <laughs> Hocked a loogie at his neighbor after the guy complained that Bieber was driving 100 miles per hour in his gated community neighborhood. Eat that, bitch. <laughs> July 10th, 2013, Bieber pees in a restaurant mop bucket. As he runs off, he sprays a photograph of Bill Clinton with a bottle of blue liquid and yells, F Bill Clinton. This kid has spunk, moxie, and probably a few other STDs, okay? It hasn't been easy being the daughter of an iconic movie star, but I'm not here to talk about my mother. <laughs> or her Oscar. Charlie, if you're winning, then something's wrong with the scoreboard. <laughs> Come on, man. Charlie, if you're winning, then this must not be a child custody hearing. <laughs> <laughs> Only time your kids get to see you is in reruns. <laughs> Charlie, don't you want to live to see their first 12 steps? <laughs> Martin Sheen and Emilio Estevez said they would have been here tonight, but they had a family obligation. <laughs> Charlie Sheen has paid for so much sex, he keeps his credit card under his balls to save time. For years, Rob Lowe had a sex addiction, but he cured it by getting less famous. <laughs> I remember the first time I became aware of Rob. I was at a casting meeting for Tommy Boy when I came across your headshot, and I do mean came across. I want to talk about all the blue collar guys. These guys are like, they're like rock stars. And by that I mean old and boring and loaded with syphilis. The tour grossed 15 million bucks, 15 million. You know, this is at a time when your fans have so many other entertainment options. You know, they, they could have stayed home and burned a cross or their sisters or, you know what I mean? They had other choices, you know, but instead they got, they got all gussied up in their best who farted t-shirts and they, uh, they jumpstart the El Camino and they take the hard earned money that they made on an extra shift working the Tilt-A-Whirl or robbing a liquor store and 
you know, this is money they could have spent on abortions or crystal meth, and they come out, they, they make an extra effort to come out and see you guys. As you can tell, I'm a classically trained actor, but even I can't act like I give a shit about these people. <laughs> you know, whenever I attend an event like this, my first order of business is to choose whom I'll be taking home to ravish upon my waterbed. <laughs> Whitney Cummings, how I would make sweet love to you. But alas, I'm just an old man with perfect vision. <laughs> and I suspect you might be too. Kevin, you are everywhere. You know, Kevin's actually gonna be on the next season of Game of Thrones. He's playing Peter Dinklage's shadow. <laughs> Kevin does all of his own stunts. He climbs into his own chair. He climbs out of his own bathtub. He goes up on his wife. <laughs> Kevin has a Napoleon complex. Uh, Kevin, Napoleon was the leader of France. Ludicrous France is in Europe. Justin, Europe's a continent. Shaq, a continent is not a free breakfast. What an honor to be here with Mike Tyson. The last time I hung out with Mike, we locked ourselves in a bathroom and ripped through five grams of cocaine. But Mike's really changed his ways, though. See, here he is taking a beating for a check and it hasn't been made out to Don King. That is a good one. That is a good one. My hero, Charlie Sheen. Dude, your nose is like my ass. There's nothing you won't shove up there. Right now, I'm gonna do something insanely stupid for you. I am going to attempt to get a black eye from the former heavyweight champion of the world. Mike, bro, I am ready. Let me get that fist. Man, I want to do this shit. We're not going to call the police or anything after this. I think that'll do it. Thank you, everybody. And folks, in case you haven't read Larry's book, it's also called Get Her Done, because after three pages, you want to put her down. It's an easy read, mostly just pictures of sandwiches he fucked on the road. Oh, come on, we all know Larry's a freak. In fact, he's fucked so many farm animals down south, they call him Larry the Stable Guy. <laughs> Larry, remember, nay means nay. <laughs> Ann Coulter is one of the most repugnant, hateful, hatchet-faced bitches alive. But, but it's not too late to change, Ann. You could kill yourself. <laughs> when Joan was born, the doctors took a look at her and said, holy shit, we're gonna make a fortune on this one. <laughs> then they got on the Mayflower and set sail for America. <laughs> Our Jones started out in Brooklyn as little Joan Malinsky. You know, my Joni, Jewish girls are supposed to grow up and marry doctors, not support them. <laughs> Joan is not an Orthodox Jew, but men still f her through a sheet so they don't have to look at that face. <laughs> If you can take a joke, then so can the believers watching tonight. Because face it, Biebs, you become a cocky little shit. You are the King Joffrey of pop. Okay. 
What's your rap name? Feminem? <laughs> Selena Gomez wanted to be here, but she's dating men now. <laughs> Is it true you dumped her because she grew a mustache before you? Some of you hate me just because I'm me. Some of you hate me because of the things I may have said in the past. Well, hey, I'm, I'm not perfect. I'm a person trying to figure out my life, just like everyone else. All I want is for future generations of transgendered people to know that if I can find the courage to be who I am, then you can too. If, if you have a problem with that, then you can suck my dick. Dennis Rodman, where do I begin? If you had told me back in the 90s that Dennis Rodman would be negotiating a nuclear arms agreement in 2018, I would have said, Dennis Rodman is alive in 2018. <laughs> you know, it's tough having little kids and being out on the road all the time. In fact, I asked Larry's wife, Kara, I said, how do you and Larry do it? She said, I just close my eyes and pretend it isn't happening. <laughs> she said conceiving those two children was the worst 30 seconds of her life. I, I respect Charlie Sheen, I do. I, I say yes, because I respect, not, not, not his body of work, like not, it's, it's all been very Christian Slayer-ish. Like, it just like... <laughs> he sucks, but he's, he's good, but he sucks at the same time. I think that his stand that he made uh, against the business, I think this is a f***ed up business, but he stood up, he, he still survived, uh, and he proved that nobody can keep, like, a sheen down, you know? They can keep uh, Estevez down, because his brother... <laughs> And he's the good one. That motherfucker do everything right. And that career is over. Holy shit. <laughs> Tiger blood, he's selling his own blood to make money. Caitlyn Jenner, I just want to thank you for all you've done for the trans movement in the size 16 stiletto industry. <laughs> you are such an incredible athlete. People forget just how fast you once ran from your first family to go be on a reality show. <laughs> You're a Republican, I don't know why. You've already gained control over a woman's body. <laughs> what does that party have to do to lose your support? Uh, be your son? <laughs> Caitlin, I know you've only publicly identified as a woman for a few years, but I just want you to know that I know that deep down you have always been a c And uh, <laughs> I spell it with a K though for you. <laughs> You're great, thank you. And I must be the only black man in America who's never been inside Lisa Lampanelli's p <laughs> I tried to get in one night, but the fire marshal was in there turning niggas away. <laughs> Look at this beautiful crowd. Tonight we honor the reason the world has a Vin Diesel. <laughs> Bruce is a real man's man. He told me numerous times not to hold back tonight. And it's been great getting to know you and your lovely family. And I, I see, uh, I met Rumor, your daughter. Hi, Rumor. I guess that's the name your mom gives you when she's not 100% sure who your father is. <laughs> Get a shot of that whole table. It's the beautiful circle of life, Bruce. Your family looks like all the villains you killed off in the Die Hard movies. <laughs> what a legend. Carrot Top. I used to think they called you Carrot Top because of your red hair. Now I know it's because everyone would love to see you buried up to your forehead in dirt. 
Rocky Miller. No! No! Jeff Frost, you're a failure and you're nothing to look at. Looking at you, it reminds me to shave my taint. It's bad mojo at these roasts if you don't make fun of Lisa Lump of Jelly's haunted vagina. I'm told that she's had so many black men going off up inside her that if you hold her pussy up to your ear, you're gonna hear sweet Georgia Brown. There it is again. Is anyone else hearing that? Lisa, could you please set your pussy to vibrate? It'd be a lot safer in here. Cold out there tonight. What, you don't like it? Damn, girl, boy, whatever. You want to pet it? It's 100% puppy. Oh, for Peter, right? People who eat and torture animals, right? No? No, it's not real. It's not real. We shaved B. Arthur's back. Look, I love you, babe. I love you. I love you. You look great, babe. I wouldn't fuck B. Arthur's dick with Andy Dick's pussy. You know, I must say, you know, I'm rather intrigued by your puffy, grotesque face, Jeff, you know? <laughs> normally, normally when I'm next to somebody whose face is grotesque as yours, they throw in the towel, man. You're a mess, man. <laughs> During your performance, I wish I bit my own ears off, you know? You're <laughs> Suck, man. Suck. All right, all right. That was the best fight. Robin Quivers is here. Robin does only sleep with white men. Robin's fucked so many white guys. Abercrombie and Fitch took out ad space on her taint. <laughs> Robin's vagina is like the first five minutes of a movie. It's never been seen by a black guy. That's great. <laughs> Robin Quivers has slept with so many white guys, her hymen hasn't even broken yet. <laughs> and now for the amazing Joan Rivers, everybody. Joan Rivers, yes, come on. Joan. I loved you in The Wrestler. <laughs> Justin Bieber, everybody. <laughs> Seems like only yesterday you were discovered on YouTube. Time flies when you're a piece of shit. <laughs> Justin, Selena Gomez had to f you. She is literally the least lucky Selena in all of entertainment history. John was, uh, John was married to my favorite supermodel, Rebecca Romaine O'Connell. <laughs> Jesus. Oh. John, you, uh... John, you lost your wife to the fat kid from Stand By Me. <laughs> Holy shit. Look at you, you greasy Greek bastard. I look at you and I wonder, how can there be an energy crisis? We shouldn't be drilling in Alaska, we should be wringing out your family's pillowcases. Seth Rogen. <laughs> You're welcome, you hairy Canuck. I, Hollywood, made the world accept you. I put you on a movie poster and I said, deal with it. And then I put Bob Streisand on that poster and the world said, no. <laughs> Jeff Ross, hi, I'm Hollywood. We haven't met before. <laughs> nice to meet you, nice to meet you. And now I come to you, James Franco. You're welcome. And no one can argue with your integrity as an actor. 
from jerking off next to a boulder to sucking a gun like a dick, you are truly the Jimmy Stewart of today. <laughs> but I know it hasn't always been easy for you, James. You overcame a crippling childhood affliction known as dumb face. <laughs> And the Oscars, the Oscars. Look, I don't even watch the Oscars anymore. But everyone was calling me, the kid is making a mockery of your night. But you did the impossible. You made me like Anne Hathaway. <laughs> I made sure she won every single fucking award for that lame Miz theater camp bullshit because of what you put it through, you lazy dick. Of course, here's my friend Jerry Springer, a man who bathes in the tears of poor people. What a life, what a life this guy had. He was mayor of, uh, what, Cincinnati, was it, Jerry? Yeah. Then he got busted with a prostitute. I mean, really, who the hell pays a hooker with a personal check? That's like, that's like, that's like paying a hooker with a personal check. Lisa Lampanelli, what can you say about it, the queen of mean? I just want to explain to you, Lisa, that the only reason that black men f you is so they can feel like they beat up a white man and got away with it. Caroline Ray from Sabrina is here. Give it up. Give it up. But Caroline, if you're here, that means uh, Salem the Cat must have turned this down, huh? <laughs> Sorry, Mr. De Niro, we know how much you love that black pussy. And now, uh, on to uh, Larry, the cable guy. This, this is exciting, I gotta tell you. I, I've never roasted a fake character before. Maybe next year we can roast SpongeBob SquarePants. Larry's, Larry's whole act is a sham, like the Bible or the Holocaust. Some people say Larry's only successful because he's pandering to the lowest common denominator and blatantly and non-ironically exploiting people's racist and homophobic tendencies. Don't listen to these people, Larry. They're just bitter and jealous and right. <laughs> you inbred hillbilly. How the fuck are you so popular? <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. This one finally broke my back. Your fans can't even afford cable. They're not coming because they think you're funny. They're just, they've never seen a cable guy. You could have come up with other characters your fans have never seen, like Larry the Dentist, or Larry the Librarian, or Larry the High School Diploma. <laughs> Thanks for letting me roast you, uh, Larry. You, you make more money in a week than I'll make in my life, and, uh, and that feels good, I gotta tell you. You say you've never done drugs, but watching your success has put me in rehab twice. So uh, thanks for ripping my soul out, you hillbilly fuck. Ladies and gentlemen, Demi Moore. Yes. Yes, I knew he would be. I mean, even though I went over everything yesterday, I knew he'd forget. <laughs> so, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Demi Moore. I was married to Bruce Willis for the first three Die Hard movies, which makes sense because the last two sucked. After all these years, I have to say, you know what? You look good. I mean, you still look the same from the eyebrows up. <laughs> but you know, when I look back over all the years that we've had together, we certainly had our ups and downs. But I have to say, those were some of the best times of my life. I just look at our marriage like the sixth sense. You were dead the whole time. <laughs> Speaking of reading, I recently read Spay's memoir, Almost Interesting. Actually, I'm lying. You really think the first book I pick up in 20 years is gonna be by the guy who played Dickie Roberts, former child star? I don't think so. What the f Jeff Ross, I love that new hairstyle, pal. It makes it so much easier for women to describe you to the cops. 
Now, all they have to say is, he looked like Fat Pitbull. <laughs> I just met this guy, Pete Davidson, backstage before the show, a great guy. He asked to take a picture with me, and I didn't even realize he was one of the comedians. I told him, don't give up, kid. Whatever disease you have, you can beat it. <laughs> That's a Super Bowl chair. That's a Super Bowl chair. Jewel is here, or as I call her, Trailer Swift. <laughs> Jewel, I do not want to badmouth you since God already did. No. I think your smile is cute. I feel like your teeth are like the Spice Girls. You know, they're all different colors and they're like doing their own thing. So that's <laughs> fun. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> that was funny. I know I've been, uh, I've been driving recklessly, getting arrested, smoking weed, abandoning monkeys, and urinating publicly. But my biggest regret is plowing my Maserati into Jeff Ross's Saturn in the parking lot, man. <laughs> And, uh, Jeff, I feel really bad because I don't know where you're gonna sleep tonight, man. <laughs> Look, I'm new to comedy, but here's a joke, all right? What do you get when you give a teenager $200 million? A bunch of has-beens calling you a lesbian for two hours. <laughs> I've known Jeff for many years. I was the one that held him in my arms the day they called him the worst actor ever on television. <laughs> Before he died, Christopher Reeve actually was watching a Jeff Foxworthy show and got up and changed the channel. <laughs> You are one irritating Jew broad. The first time I heard your voice, my foreskin fell off. <laughs> what have you done to your upper lip? Did you blow a beehive? <laughs> Holy shit, you look like Steven Tyler f the life raft. <laughs> Seriously, I, I mean, you're not the only one here. All these rubber face monsters, what the f what, what, what goes into people's heads out here? Why, did you really, really, is that good? What, how much worse could your real face look than that clown mask you've had welded on your head. You, you used to look your age, now you don't even look your species. You, you, you once said you succeeded by saying what everyone else is thinking, and that's not true, it's not true. I never heard you say, holy shit, what the f did I do to my face? I look like a surprised catfish. So many gay jokes tonight. Wow, so many gay jokes about Franco. Apparently, if you're clean, well-dressed, and mildly cultured, you're super gay now. Is that why the rest of you guys are so aggressively fat and dirty? <laughs> you think if you read one book and take a shower, dicks are just gonna fly into your face? Peyton Manning's here. I love Peyton Manning. He's the shit. Peyton, Peyton looks like if football players evolved to no longer need helmets. <laughs> no, seriously, Peyton, I love all of your work, especially when I saw you in the Goonies yelling, hey, you guys! A Super Bowl is also what Peyton's mom had to cut his hair with as a child. Let's get to the real reason why we're all here tonight, to meet Robert De Niro. Robert, by the way, what's a legend like you doing at a comedy roast? I mean, is this the same Robert De Niro that did Little Fockers and Dirty Grandpa and... Yeah, I guess it kind of makes sense, yeah. I can't wait till someone makes an offer you can refuse. Alec is a romantic. He met his first wife on a movie set 
and his second wife on a swing set. Her name is Hilaria, and what's even more hilarious is they already have four kids together. But he finally got it right. His wife is a calming presence and an amazing yoga instructor. She was able to get Alec into this one position where he has to work until he dies. Many of you might not know this, but Seth Rogen has a writing and directing partner named Evan Goldberg. What does this other guy look like that you're the face of the operation? <laughs> I assume he's like a sweaty Orthodox Jew eating a pastrami sandwich. <laughs> hey, Sethi, yeah, I added nine dick jokes on page four. And I was thinking that the guys are friends, and then they're not friends, and then at the end of the movie, they're friends again. <laughs> And also, they should smoke a lot of ganja, Sethi. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Seth Rogen. Let him hear it. God. Seth Rogen is so Jewish. <laughs> Seth Rogen is so fucking Jewish. Anyway, I'm excited to be here tonight. <laughs> Rosie and I were once inseparable. We lived together, we worked together, we even got tattoos together. You remember. I got Rosie's face tattooed on my chest, and believe me, it is hard to get a woman to have sex with you when Roseanne is fucking staring at her. <laughs> it's true. It's even harder to masturbate. You know, Rosie, this is true, she actually had property of Tom Arnold tattooed on her hip, which made me the fourth largest property owner in California. I know. I know. What the fuck am I doing here? This is like that Moscow hotel room where a bunch of whores pissed all over Donald Trump. I mean, this is what you get for being Alex's friend. <laughs> On nights like these, you expect your friends, the people you've worked with closely, to show up. Tina Fey, Tracy Morgan, Thomas the Tank Engine, Meryl Streep. Not one. Instead, we have a group, uh, <laughs> you can't even find them on uh, Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 like, who are these people? I mean, who the fuck are you? <laughs> yeah. Ann Coulter, everybody. <laughs> How about a hand for James's grandma, 91 years old? Beautiful. Hundred and twenty-seven hours is how long she has left. <laughs> Get him, Grandma. Get him. Get him. Mike Tyson. Am I saying that right? How <laughs> get you good? Oh God. Hey, 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 Mike. Here's something you'll never hear. Great tattoo. You have a slutty lower back tattoo on your face. <laughs> Men don't know whether to be scared of it or finish on it. And Kathy Griffin, you know what you are, darling? You are a thief. Yes, you stole my act, you stole my gaze, and you stole the face of the Burger King. I am not happy with this. Which brings us to Gilbert Gottfried. Your set was longer than Bernie Madoff's prison sentence. I mean, on. <laughs> Open your fing eyes. The audience is leaving, you ass. 
I was going to make an announcement tonight that I was going to retire. This was going to be it for me. I wanted to spend my golden years with my wonderful daughter, Melissa, my beloved grandson, Copper, Cooper. I was... <laughs> I was just gonna sit back, but after tonight's show, no, no, I cannot leave comedy in the hands of these untalented people. No, comedy, comedy, and I say this with humility, comedy needs me, comedy needs me, yes. Joan Rivers, and even more than comedy, and I say this, America needs Joan Rivers. Yes, America needs Joan. Will you cue the flag, please? Thank you. America needs Joan Rivers. Chris Red looks like a police sketch of someone doing blackface. <laughs> you look like nephew Jemima. <laughs> Why do you always look like you just got your braces off? <laughs> Speaking of Chris Red, Caitlyn Jenner is here. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Like Caitlyn, my transitions are really awkward. <laughs> Caitlyn completed her gender reassignment in 2017, finally confirming that no one in that family wants a white dick. Look, for real, I, I know we're all here making fun of Caitlyn, but honestly, I want to take this moment to publicly thank you. Uh, as an athlete, I want to thank you for your bravery. Um, and as a, as a human, I want to thank you for the doors you've opened. And on behalf of the entire NBA and half of the rappers on the Billboard charts, I want to thank you for giving your daughters their daddy issues. Justin, you know, I lost my dad on 9-11, and I always regretted growing up without a dad. Until I met your dad, Justin. <laughs> now I'm glad mine's dead. <laughs> What's up, Ludacris? What's up, man? You might know Ludacris from your mom's That's What I Call Music CD. Let's get to the reason I'm here tonight, which is to give Justin Bieber some tips to use when he inevitably ends up in prison. <laughs> I've been in lockup and you wouldn't last a week, so pay attention. The first thing you'll need is a shank. I made mine out of a pintail comb and a pack of gum. <laughs> I'll show you how later, it's so simple. I found Bubblicious works best and it's so much fun to say. You see, when I did my stretch, all the hood rats on my cell block wanted to break off a piece of Martha Stewart's ass, so I decided some bitch needed to get got. I walked into the chow hall, picked out the biggest bull dyke, and I stuck her. From then on, prison was easier than making blueberry scones. Jack, I hope your mom doesn't still hold a grudge. Will and Grace was really the best you could do. It just... <laughs> just Jack. Just Jack is, uh, it's also what I'm gonna do in my hotel room alone after sitting next to Blake Griffin all night. Jesus Christ. You're so hot, what the fuck? You're so hot. I'd fuck you in front of my grandparents. I, that's how... I almost want to, you know? I feel like Mimi would be proud. Blake, you look like a black guy that got made by a printer running out of ink. That's... 